Today is a beautiful day for science. Currently, we're going to take a quick look at HMIPC. HMIPC shows us the polar air activity and the layout of the regions on the surface of the sun. It's a beautiful way to be able to see what exactly is happening on the sun and uh, be able to see how and why some of those potential regions are high or low or whatever they may be considering the situation. So in paying attention to that, the activity that we got from region uh, regions, the trio of regions, 3293, which was the first come across, 3296 following after, and 3297 following after that, the reason it occurred the way it did has a lot to do with its geomagnetic structure at the surface. And if we look at it, we can see, I don't actually have a Kerbalion to point things out on this page. <laughs> now let me grab a uh, Kerbalion. I'm going to borrow you Julian Manley Earls. I named my Kerbalions after certain uh, scientists that, or people that have put an amazing addition to our scientific discoveries and advancements that we have today. All right, here we are. So in looking at this, we can see, let's zoom in a little more as well. We've got the high resolution imagery here for HMIBC. I did not add this to the, uh, the other portion of the video because one, it's a different size actually. It's not the same size of video, which is, uh, it's larger actually. But uh, focusing on the, uh, the point here, we see here that 30, or 20, oh yeah, 3293 actually develops, as it's coming onto the region, an inner positive region, umbra, as it's coming on. So we see that coming up here. And as that occurs, thus begins the inclination of potential and the activity that we begin to see from these regions. Additional to that, we see 3296 is actually a negative leading region. The reason why this is unusual is because as the magnetic field lines come down, the positive is actually at the south and negative is actually at the north. So if we were to break it down and look at why these field lines are coming the way they are, let me go ahead and <laughs> make it small again. <laughs> uh, we will see that the reason is because this is the polarity of the sun right now for this cycle, cycle 25. Cycle 26, it will be the opposite that whole reversal. And so we see up here is the negative energy. Down here is the positive energy. And these magnetic field lines are going straight up and down at the beginning. And due to the rotation of the sun, the center rotates a lot faster. In fact, it rotates almost nine days faster uh, in the whole period. So we have a 23, 24 day uh, period of, actually I think it's 24 and a half days, uh, period of where the equator rotates, a full rotation, 360, while it's a little over 35 days for the poles, for these polar regions. And it's not like a sudden change, it's progressive. So it goes from a fast rotation to a slow rotation as you go. And this causes these straight up and down magnetic field lines to start to become uh, sort of bent, no, well, not so much bent, it's curved and twisted. So like holding a rubber band around a tennis ball, take your finger along the equator of the tennis ball that you're holding and start pulling the rubber bands around. And that's what's happening to these magnetic field lines. They're getting pulled around and around and around continually during the cycle process. And eventually we have these crossing points where these loops have been spun so many times from that faster rotation of the equator that they create what's called electromagnetic buoyancy. They actually begin to propel each other from one another so much that it has a buoyancy. It, it pushes itself upward out past the surface, creating umbras. And a magnetic field line actually stops all luminescence. It, it, it blocks all the light. And that's why these sunspots were the biggest bundle, the strongest, densest bundles of these magnetic field lines emit no light, yet they emit the greatest amount of frequency because they're ingelled inside of all of these 
is plasma from the sun. Very, very intense plasma. So, going back to this. So we know that we have a negative northern pole, a positive southern pole, and the twisting is bringing these loops round and round and round as the cycle goes. And what happens is we end up with a positive uh, leading, or, uh, um, yeah, positive leading. Leading means in, in the front of it, the first thing we see. And a negative telling, where the loops are coming out are negative, and they're going back in as positive. But we see that's actually the opposite of what's happening at 3296. And that is another reason for the heightened potential of what happened, and actually the most significant. So we have the positive umbra that started to form in 3297 as it came into rotation. And then we have the reverse region in 3296. And then we have 3293, uh, 3293 is the, the furrow one. 3297, just as a complex region in general and very large. But it gets messed up in the progress of rotating across the Earth facing disk, which is the portion of the sun's viewable by Earth, as 3296 and 3293 have their reactions together. So this explains why we've seen all that activity, all those corner mass ejections, those proton events, a lot of surface level events, very intense uh, activity. Largest flares were the ones closer to the surface. That's because as you get closer to the surface, the more compact and more energetic those events are. And we'll see that as that resolution begins, as we start to build up and start seeing more and more powerful activity and those proton events start to come, a positive region starts to develop at the south end of that negative umbra leading the reverse 3296. And that's coming up here shortly. I have it going pretty slow. But you can see how organized it is in reverse. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So as this activity goes, you also see a slowly building progression of negative leading loop uh, ends for 3297. So 3296 is starting to impact the design of 3297, which was just a complex region, but not with a uh, negative leading at the point until 3296 had its, well, play with its loops. And now you see that le leading negative there. And that, that caused 3297 now to become a more complex and more pivotal region, causing even more issues as well. So here's that positive region developing in 3296. And you can see that as it's moving over, now it's starting to take lead. It leaves a little bit of that positive umbra there, which causes more conflict. And we see more events happening there as it decides to uh, get rid of it, as it were, and reassociate those loops in a more natural progression of where those loops can go from a straight uh, angle, as it were, or projection, trajectory. And as you see, that positive region starts to go away. As soon as that happens, we then start to see the positive following umbra that has been there since the beginning also begins to dissipate. And that has to do, uh, the reason why I'm bringing all of this up because it has to do with what we saw on the rim last night. To explain what happened on the rim last night, uh, the farewell, as we, we like to call it, uh, and the activity we've been seeing on the rim since, actually, has to do with that positive umbra on the tail of 3296. It's still out of place. It's still causing a distortion of that flow of negative umbras coming or negative magnetic field lines coming out of the negative umbra, going and reaching into the positive umbra, which should be negative telling, positive leading, to follow that uh, line of electromagnetic energy that connects the north and south pole of the sun. And as that positive region became a conflict, we ended up seeing a very beautiful event last night. And uh, I think I'm going to have to go to SDO's uh, imagery here to be able to show that very more. Uh, much more clearly. So let's go ahead and do that. This is SDOs 304, so we can watch that plasma. And this is a beautiful, absolutely beautiful eruption. And this is very likely, if it was more orientated towards Earth, we would have seen a, um, a proton event. But 
at, uh, let's see. There it is. So you see it right at the tail end of that. So SDO needs to up update a little more. <laughs> but uh, that or the satellite might have been out of line of sight for some of that. That happens. So we'll, we'll take it slow. So let's take a view of this activity. All right, here's the eruption point. This is the peak point of the, um, the ejection here. So this is when that energy has reached its peak point and it's, it's reacting to that positive umbra at the back end being so close to all this other activity that's happening. 3296 has gone through this major significant process of change of where it has eradicated much of its complex nature. And now we see here, looking closer at this activity, that eruption has begun and it then ejects that plasma right there. Let's see if I can get a little, little there we go. And there, that, that is the ICME we saw, which will not be impacting Earth. This activity right here, it's, it's pretty significant. It, it would be a geomagnetic storm <laughs> if it was to be impacting us. So this is nothing of concern. It's going ahead of Earth's orbit, as I like to call it to where it's going to be before we, it's going to pass where our orbit is before we get there. And this activity is very significant because it's showing a, a good amount of detail of that umbra inflicting that change and the change the region has to inflict upon the umbra to get in line with what everything else has been going on. It was really the last bit of potential to go on. And I said in my last video that I put out, that it'll probably be on the rim before we see any more activity. And thus, it's on the rim when you're seeing that. And the reason I say that is because based upon analysis of these events as they progress, typically you see a time frame before you see a reaction of that nature for pretty much what's left of a resolution. The last high potential uh, situation was those loops that were actually weaving in and out of one another, showing intensity and having some small isolated flares, but barely hanging on between 3296 and 3297. And that was our last event, and that was the last video I put out. But now we're seeing the events and activity that are coming from this final resolution that it's working on, just as it goes out of view. So we get a good side view of the show of this, and it demonstrates very nicely in how and why this activity occurs. So I just wanted to point that out. I just figured it was a good, um, a good way to see <clears throat> why I say that I expect such and such situation or I expect certain potential or if um, a certain event occurs, why I was expecting it. It's not like I'm doing some kind of Houdini. It's, it's legitimately just in the imagery itself. Uh, and sometimes the data, when you look at HMIBC, it's actually that's, that's more of a modeled data showing us the energy levels and polarity that's going on. So that's just a quick update to uh, explain the final points in the farewell of the trio of regions 3293, 3296, and 3297. We currently have another trio of regions coming. Right now, there are C potential uh, region set, nothing too significant, but the southernmost region does have a growing potential as it is an expanding region, and the chance of these trio of regions to have some further potential is there, but it's not gonna be anything as significant as what we saw with this uh, previous trio. So that said, that's the update. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Cheers and science on.